Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I'll attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to be talking about amino acids versus ammonium, uh, usually provided as DAP, as a nitrogen source. But first I'd like to thank my Patreons, especially Chris Turner and Linton. I can't thank you enough for help with this channel. So let's get started. All right, so someone wanted to know why you would use one source of nitrogen over the other, and that's why I'm making this video. There are generally two main sources of nitrogen that you'll ever add as a supplement. It'll be as amino acids, generally a varied mix of them, like with a Fermade product, or you'll add it as ammonium ions, generally in the form of diammonium phosphate, or DAP. But what's the difference between amino acids and ammonium in terms of how the yeast handles it? Well, let's look at the ammonium first. First, you need to know that the surface of the cell membrane of a yeast cell has a bunch of ion channels in it, like the calcium ion channels I discussed in the video on why some spirits burn when you drink them. In this case, though, they are potassium ion channels. These potassium ion channels just so happen to also allow ammonium ions through them. So when you add your ammonium as DAP, that DAP being an ionic salt, and an ionic salt, when you put it into water, will break up. So in this case, it breaks up into two ammonium ions, diammonium, and a phosphate ion, which is unimportant for this video. Those two ammonium ions will then travel to the potassium ion channel, and they will pass through that ion channel unimpeded, unregulated, and it costs the cell no energy for this to happen. That ammonium will pour in until the concentration of ammonium is equal inside the cell to outside the cell. Once that ammonium is inside the cell, it'll be grabbed by a chaperone molecule. It'll be taken and turned into a glutamate amino acid. Then it can be taken to be used in protein synthesis. It may be turned into another amino acid first though, but if not, that glutamate will be taken to a vacuole and it'll be stored there until it's needed. So because that ammonium is just pouring in and the yeast is using it up as fast as it can, it can lead to uncontrolled growth and uncontrolled growth can also mean more fusel. That is if you put too much ammonium in. That uncontrolled growth can also lead to hotter fermentations because of all that extra metabolism going on, which generates heat. In really large volumes of wash or mash, that might mean you need to control the temperature because the fermentation vessel may not be able to passively remove heat fast enough. Now, if you do put in too much nitrogen, the yeast cell can detect it. But what happens is the yeast cell will start expelling some of that nitrogen. However, it can only expel it as amino acids. It cannot expel ammonium ions. This can be problematic if the cell starts expelling amino acids that it currently needs to create a certain protein, right? Because it'll need to create new amino acids, and that's just more growth. That said, how does it handle amino acids if you add them as a source? Well, what happens is these amino acids will approach the cell, and this cell membrane has a bunch of what are called amino acid transferases. They're a special protein embedded in the wall. The amino acid will attach to this AAT. The AAT will then pull it inside the cell, which it will then attach to a chaperone molecule, and then it'll either go directly to protein synthesis, where it may be turned into another amino acid, or it gets turned into glutamate and it gets stored. If that glutamate is needed or another amino acid is needed, storage will release it and it will get pushed into protein synthesis. Or it may expel that amino acid if it turns out there's too much nitrogen within the cell. This method of intake for amino acids is regulated, so it'll only happen when the yeast doesn't have excess nitrogen, and it also costs the cell energy to bring that amino acid inside. This is why using amino acids as a nitrogen source is a slower process so you don't end up with uncontrolled growth and you won't have as much of an issue with heat generation. That's why generally speaking it's considered that amino acids are a healthier alternative for a nitrogen source but obviously you'll have to look at the cost effectiveness of using amino acids over ammonium. Most hobbyists, myself included, will use ammonium just because buying a mixed amino acid as a nitrogen source is not very cost effective for us because it can be quite expensive to do that. But that's it for this video on nitrogen source. All right, make sure to check out the Patreon or PayPal donation link if you want to help out the channel. No pressure though. I hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to learn more and have a great week.